So I've recently came across a lot of videos like this. All right, lore based Doom Slayer versus Creative Steve plus commands. Creative Steve is fodder. And me being a complete Minecraft nerd, I wasn't gonna let this slide. Because you may be thinking, oh yeah, Steve is kinda strong, I watched a game theory video, blah blah blah. Uh, no, you don't understand how insanely strong Steve is. Like, it's not even funny. I hate seeing so many people lowballing Steve online. <sighs> so let this be my video PSA on why Steve is incomprehensibly strong. And could also solo fiction. Wait, what? <laughs> Okay, so after watching some power scaling videos, I noticed that there's five main components to measure how strong someone is. The first aspect is raw strength, or in our case, how much Steve can lift up and carry. Sure, yeah, there's been a game theory video made just about this, made in 2018, but because times have changed, the number that they came up with has become incredibly inaccurate. There's actually a lot more that goes into this question than you would even think, and no one has covered it yet. So let me begin. First, we need to find out what the heaviest thing Steve could hold is, and that would have to be the gold block, is what I would say if this was 2018, but... But no, there's actually a block that's seven times heavier than gold, and that is a netherite. But to find out how much a netherite block weighs, we could actually use a gold block for reference. You see, a gold block weighs about 21.3 tons, and dividing that by 9, we get to see how much each little gold weighs. Multiply that by 4, and we get how much gold is inside netherite. But for the nether scrap, we don't really know what that is. Yeah, we know it comes from ancient debris, which can be found underneath the nether, but we don't really know much more than that. But taking some lowball assumptions, we could assume it's was popularly theorized. And that theory is, basically a bunch of hoglins and whatnot die and it's just the remains. So we could assume that each scrap is at least as heavy as a bone block. And after some rather concerning research, I found that a 1 by 1 meter cube of bone would be 2.2 tons. Why is there a study on this? Putting this all together, we could see that one netherite bar is 19 tons, and then multiply that by 9, and we get the insane weight of 164 tons for one netherite block, aka already the weight of a blue whale. Now with this insane netherite block, we could fill up an entire shulker box top to bottom with stacks of it. And once we're done filling that up, we could use control pick block, and that copies the shulker box into your inventory with all of this MBT data. And by doing that, we are now carrying 284,000 tons in just one shulker box, which thinks this random guy I found on Quora, what we're holding is more than the weight of a skyscraper. Oh, and you think that's impressive, because you could actually grab a chest and fill it up with these shulker boxes, take that chest into your inventory, and you can start filling up another chest with stacks of the previous chest. And you could actually continue doing this process with the pick block technique for a long time, until eventually you reach a depth tag limit of the game, which is doing this 171 times. So after doing that entire process 171 times, you should result in a final chest, which, once again, you can multiply this through your inventory and also into your offhand to get the max stuffies you can hold. And uh, I, I actually have no clue how much this is. So I then spent an entire afternoon calculating it all. And I wanted to do it all in one sitting because I thought it would be cool for this time lapse, but in reality it just gave me extreme brain rot. But here we are, and this is the number I got. And uh, I went to some random math website and it told me that it's um, <laughs> this many tons. Seven followed by 618 zeros. Mm -hmm. This website also has a worded out section for my number, but it it's only telling me that my number is too big even as I scroll. And after some furthermore calculations, I found out that saying our number is heavier than the observable universe is an understatement. Our number is so big that Steve could basically hold this many universes. And even this number is so big I can't even visualize it. Going back to the one website, it basically says that it's 667 188 Ilion mini universes. I don't even know what that number is. <laughs> that Steve could just carry around. But another thing is, the Minecraft Earth is different than our Earth. It means that the gravity that Steve experiences is different than the gravity that we experience, and this could affect that how much he feels is weighing. So I set up this experiment to determine how strong gravity is by determining the sand's rate of acceleration. Now all I gotta do is press this button and... Ah, uh, so I don't need to do my own research. Thank you, internet. Anyways, if we take our previous number of tons and then multiply it by the new gravity, we get... Uh oh. Oh no. Okay, cool. Now that you're beginning to understand just the stupidity of how strong Steve is, let's head over to speed. To start off, I built a 100 block race course to see how fast Steve's sprint jump was. And after recording a quick clip where I ran it all, I put that clip into my editing software and cropped out the exact points where it begins and finishes. And it told me that it took 14.4 seconds for Steve to run 100 blocks. Or in other words, 15.5 miles per hour. Which to be clear, each block in Minecraft has a 1 cubed meter correlation to real life. And in real life, the 100 meter dash record is 19.5 
five, eight seconds by Usain Bolt. So just by casually running, we're already one of the fastest people in the world. But no, no, we could go faster. Since we're in creative, I tried getting a base fly test speed, which came out to be 5.07 seconds, aka 44 miles per hour. But Steve could still fly a lot faster than that. By going in spectator, not many people know this, but by scrolling up on your mouse, you could actually turn up your acceleration speed. And you could actually go extremely fast with this. So after struggling to get on the dang starting platform, I eventually launched myself so fast I zipped past the finish line and accidentally started loading out new chunks behind it. And just to see how fast that was, it was 1.42 seconds to reach it, aka 157 miles per hour, which in real life is as fast as a skydiver going headfirst out of a plane. But now we reached a point where there's only one way to go faster. Drugs. In Minecraft, as we all know, there are potion effects. When splashed with one of these speed 2 potions, we get a 40% speed increase, but that number is nothing. By doing slash effects, you can actually boost yourself up with speed 255. But I noticed, in order to test it, we need a better runway than the small dinky thing. So let me introduce you to the considerably larger version, which I built a 10,000 block track for, and only cuts through staggering 5 god dang villages because my dumb dumb head forgot to turn off village spawns on this world, ending this track off with a golden pad to stop me. So by going to the beginning of the track, I gave myself speed and I began running. As you can see, we're actually running so fast, the road is struggling to load in. So I put on chunk force so you can get more of a sense of scale. You can also see the ridiculous speed of the clouds above me as I run. But once I reached the finish line, I threw the clip into Premiere Pro and it ended up taking 34 Point 15 seconds. And after doing some brief calculations, that ends up being 655 miles per hour, which is basically the speed of sound. We are casually walking faster than a literal plane, but the thing is, you could still go faster than this. In Minecraft, you could actually slash attribute your speed to becoming your new base, but unlike the speed effects earlier that cap out at 255, for this we could just... Yeah. And now, with just one little click of the W key, I immediately run off the course of the entire face of the Earth. And eventually, I just lag backwards a few thousand blocks because my PC can't handle it. Look, if I hold down W and continue running, my PC absolutely destroys itself. You can hear the fans going off. But if I try it again, this time with my cords open, you can see we launch about 10,000 blocks and then we begin slowing down due to the lack of ground underneath us. But by looking at this footage frame by frame, we could actually see a few numbers. So I record them down on a graphing calculator and you can see I actually start slowing down right after the first frame, because by then I've already fully ran outside the blocks rendering around me. Meaning, in the 0.01 second I was able to touch ground, I ran 1,003 meters, which is the equivalent of 223,000 miles per hour, which is far, far faster than anything as a human species we have came close to getting to. With this speed, you could literally run around the entire Earth in just 6 minutes. But if that's too slow for you, there's still Slash TP, which allows you to instantly Goku teleport anywhere you want. Now you may be thinking, this gives Steve infinite speed, but it actually doesn't. Here's the thing, there's actually a limit to how fast you can teleport. In Minecraft, the slash teleport command takes exactly one in-game tick to register, which is 1 20th of a second, aka 0.05 seconds. But now we need to find out the max distance we can travel within that 0.05 time frame. And using the Pythagorean theorem, we know that the longest line that could fit within a cuboid goes from one corner to the opposing corner. Oh yeah, you know I'm going nerd mode when I introduce a high school math subject. Although lots of people still think that the Minecraft world is infinite, it's, it's not. The borders at 29,999,983 blocks in each direction, but you could also teleport an additional 16 blocks beyond that given point. So sure, we could teleport from one corner to the other corner, but that's still not the greatest length we could teleport to yet. We also have to go up and down as much as possible. The exact max height that you could teleport to is apparently 19,999,999 blocks in the sky. And for underneath the road, in order to see the max distance we could go to, I had to give myself regeneration so I could survive whilst in the void. So I began testing out, and I found out that the furthest length you could teleport to is negative 20 million blocks down. I have no clue why it's only one block more than the positive level, but whatever. So I then imagined the entire Minecraft world onto Windows Paint. So the greatest distance you could teleport to is all the way down and back here, to all the way up and there. Yeah. And after a few A squared, B squared, C squareds, I found out that it's actually a 93.8 million block difference. So, what exactly does it mean if you were to travel 93 million meters in just a 20th of a second? Well on which modern physics is based, nothing in the universe can travel faster than light. Albert Bro, I'll tell you what, you fa light speed is the fastest thing in the universe. It is the closest thing to instant. Light speed is so stupidly fast, it's been theorized by achieving even up to a tenth of it. Space and time itself will begin to warp. 
Yeah, so we achieved six times the speed of light. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's only 4,196,864,312 miles per hour. I don't know. Oh, wait, hear this. By achieving faster than light speeds, you will achieve infinite mass, which means you will then achieve infinite force, which means you also then have infinite damage. So, uh, that's something. Wow, uh, I, I haven't posted in a while. I have to hurry this video up. Okay, now moving on to durability. So you may think that Creative Sea was actually invincible, which is mostly true. Things like the Void, as I said earlier, are easily survivable with just some regeneration. So, just to make it somewhat fair, we're going to use Survival Mode Steve for durability. But first, we need something that could cause damage in-game so that we can measure it in real life. And for that, there is TNT, that thing that also exists in real life. Now, although it is a one cubic meter literal bomb, that doesn't actually mean anything. We need to find out how much damage it actually packs when it explodes. So I created a custom world just made out of stone, and I dug into the ground to make this giant stone wall. And what I did is I made a little tunnel inside the giant stone wall, spawned in a piece of TNT, and then quickly patched it up. Then once the TNT goes off, I could go into spectator, and I could start seeing how much stone the TNT actually blew up by how much cobblestone it broke. I then repeated this process nine more times, and I put all the numbers onto an average calculator. Yes, I use a calculator to find the average. It's more time efficient, okay? And it told me that 30.9 9 was the average stone broken per TNT. Now thanks to some Elon Musk ascendant on Reddit, they calculated how much joules of power would be needed to destroy a 1 cubic meter cube of limestone. But that's for limestone, and the stone that we have in Minecraft is clearly not limestone. Now thanks to some more plagiarized studies I stole, a stone called Rhyolite is theorized to be the rock we see in the game. And something called the Moss Scale tells us that Rhyolite is 2.4 times harder than limestone. So we can then multiply the joules needed to blow up limestone by 2.4, and then multiply that again by the 30.9 average stone broken in our experiment. And there, now we know that there is 574 million joules of power per TNT explosion, or a real-life equivalent of 906 sticks of dynamite. <laughs> Which is cool and all, but this is what a nuclear bomb would look like if it was in Minecraft. This cube is filled up with 8,000 blocks of TNT, or in other words, 4.59 trillion joules of potential energy. And now, I'm gonna light it on myself. How the heck did I survive that without a single scratch with no armor in survival mode? Well, it's pretty easy. I just gave myself max resistance before setting it off. No, no, no. Surely I could deal at least some damage to myself. Come on. Ink crystals I found have a bigger explosion than TNT. So by doing the same methods as before, I found out that each ink crystal has 817 million joules of energy. So I set up a little experiment where I set up 9 command blocks all with the same purpose as spawn ink crystals on me. So after giving myself resistance, I turned them all on and I stood in the middle as I watched the instantly climbing number of ink crystals spawning around me. And on the top left where it says E, you could actually see how many ink crystals are being spawned around me. So as I sat there, my frame slowly became more and more AIDS, until it reached a point where I felt like my PC was about to crash, so I started to spam hit, and then eventually once we reached 24,598 ink crystals, the hits went through and I started exploding, only to all do literally no damage. So with the 24,598 ink crystals that spawned, I did some calculating, and I found out that the explosion I just took was actually stronger than the bomb that took out all of Hiroshima in 1945. I don't feel good saying that. And that's still without even using glitched OP armor or super strong attributes. I don't understand, how strong is Steve with resistance? Oh, Steve is invincible past only resistance 5. Steve is literally immortal? What do I even say anymore? If you made it this far and you still aren't convinced that Steve could destroy 99.99% of fiction, I'm just going to speed around a few more insane things Steve could do. So to test strength, I recoded the Warden's HP from 500 to this number, which is 10 to the 305th power times 5 of the Ender Dragon's HP. And with just strength alone, Steve could literally one-shot this with his fist. Oh, and just for the fun of it, let's turn this infinitely strong hit using attribute into this, which it may not look like much, but I'm actually hitting an infinite 
infinite amount of times every second. And just to show you how stupid this is, I made an entire pool of these stupidly strong wardens, and I jumped in and I immediately defeated them all with ease. Oh, and with the execute command, you can actually go between dimensions, making Steve interdimensional or multiversal by just joining other worlds and servers. And Steve could also bring his items too using the saved inventory feature. Possesses time manipulation with slash time, he could literally just do a quick command to create world eating barriers. He has access to the secret Minecraft item known as the Knowledge Book, which allows you to know all the crafting recipes, can alter matter itself using the debug stick, or it could just destroy it all with the slash build command. And for height, not only is he 6 foot 2, on the bedrock version of the game, you could do slash play animation, and you could literally make yourself a giant. He could create literal nukes with fireballs. He could literally slash summon anything. Or if he doesn't feel like doing that, he could use glitched eggs to summon other things. I know, this looks extremely cursed. And if he still really needs to, he could just use a command block to instantly kill everything around him regardless of their ability. Yeah, so not only is Steve strong, but he is a literal god. So what Kratos could flip nine realms? Steve could literally hold the entire multiverse. Doomsayer could resist getting shot with the BFG 10k, but that's still nothing compared to infinite durability. Oh, but Goku could teleport at the speed of light. Well, guess what? Steve goes six times the speed of light. You get what I'm getting at. Steve should be able to destroy anyone and everything in fiction besides entities like Toa and whatnot. So I don't want to hear anyone say that Creative Steve is overrated or weak ever again. Goodbye.